there are quite a few, uh, believe it or not, environmental education focused tall ships out there. Many of them schooners. There's probably more on the East Coast than we find out here on the West Coast. Yeah, between the two coasts and a little bit on the Great Lakes, I would guess somewhere uh, upwards of 20 different ships with a primarily an environmental focus. We have a short saying that we are here to educate, inspire, and empower people. And so that kind of sums it up. But basically it's to bring people on board to create that appreciation for the environment if they don't already have it, an awareness of what's going on in the environment if they don't already have that awareness, a sense of accountability for where these issues are stemming from, a sense of action, questioning their decisions and lifestyle choices and all of that, and then to the extent it's appropriate or possible, taking it on to an advocacy level, encouraging other people as well to reconsider some of their lifestyle choices and decisions that they make. The Puget Sound Partnership recently did a survey and found that 75% of the people that live in this region have no idea uh, the state that Puget Sound is in, which in effect is dying. You look around and see the Cascade Mountains to the east, the Olympics to the west, and green evergreens everywhere that you go uh, and have no idea how, how sick it is. What we do is we bring people out and you know 10,000 people a year and we can spout off a, all the facts and figures of the low oxygen levels and the microplastics that are in the water and everything that's happening to the large marine mammals and humans uh, in this area. Um, but you don't really understand until you're living on it, until you're part of it, until it affects you. Uh, and uh, you can see directly how you're affecting it. People from all walks of life come aboard the Adventurous. Uh, youth of all ages is how we typically like to describe the participants that come aboard the ship. We feel the message is important regardless of one's age. You're in the landfill, you know, the place where the things go after people just throw them away. There's this, this juncture that happens when you have a beautiful old ship that just captures the imagination anyway, and then you have an experience out in the elements, out in nature that maybe is different from the normal daily routine because of this opening experience they have and sort of you can't just you can't really contain the excitement of being on this kind of a ship then you also maybe can get excited about things that you wouldn't otherwise and realize that they're exciting and you know plankton are really cool you can, most people haven't had a chance to see plankton before when you actually see it it's kind of hard not to think it's really amazing Plankton toes are probably the most engaging of all the science curriculum that we have on board. We have a plankton net and on the cod end or the bottom end of the net is a cup and it has a, a wide mouth opening and so we have the participants, the, the youth, drop that attached to a line of course down into the water and let it tow a couple feet down from the surface of the water for a few minutes and then we bring it back up and then we just take like an eyedropper full of that sample, now it's concentrated, so what we've done with that is concentrate the plankton in the sample, take it under the microscope, put a drop or two, and then we just see a great diversity of, of plankton, zooplankton, phytoplankton, the copepods zipping around under the microscope. It's very engaging for the participants and of course it, it's a great introduction then into the whole food web in the water and why plankton are so important to the environment. There's a couple specific things that we do in order to live green or blue, so to speak, here you know, on the boat. Specifically in the type of products that we use, we minimize the toxic products that we use, whether that's bottom paint or cleaning products that we use on board. We don't pump any waste over the side of the boat. Um, we minimize the amount of fuel that we use, minimize fuels in many ways. I mean, we are the, the oldest living hybrid. So we only use the diesel and the main engine when we need it. Otherwise, we're operating under wind power. And that's part of uh, my mission, my job description, is to use the diesel as least as possible. And we use it very efficiently as well. We have efficient systems on board uh, in that the diesel that we use cooks our food, 
as well as heats our water, as well as powers our engine and helps, helps charge our batteries. I think all ships, regardless of their uh, motor vessels or sailing vessels or what their mission or, or reason for existence is, can play a role in this, can really be role models uh, for, for people everywhere. This community really lives out the values that are put forth as you know, what we're trying to, in terms of sustainability. So in addition to just all being here for the same, for the love of sailing and the love of the marine environment, which gives us sort of some common ground to begin with, we're all here because we care about sustainability and then we're given an opportunity to really, as a community, put that into practice. So what are some of the reasons why you think we might choose to eat local? You're an adventurous, yeah. The way that we compost, the way that we um, conserve our water. I mean, I've actually learned quite a bit from this experience about, okay, so this is actually, this isn't that hard and it makes that much more of a difference to do, do these little things. This boat is magic. Uh, there's a living history here and it touches people's lives. And when people are touched on that deeper level, they see a system that is a lot harder to see when you're back in your daily life on shore. Um, and that's, that's the spirit of this boat for nearly 100 years now. And I think that's, um, it touches you personally, and so that's going to touch you externally as well. I sat upon the set.